Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for September 22nd, 2020. We're actually getting pretty close to 2020. Well, no, we passed 2020, 2020. Okay, but it's, 20, it's September 22nd, <laughs> regardless. Welcome to Terraform Tuesday. It's my favorite day of the week. It's Terraform Tuesday, and today's topic is a continuation of last week, talking about Terraform Cloud, the service Terraform Cloud. And specifically this time, instead of doing it through a version control system, which is a valid option and probably the best possible option when you're automating things, this time we're going to see how we interact using the CLI. Now, yes, you can in fact interact with the Terraform Cloud through the CLI and I am going to show you how to do that. So that is the topic for today. Before we get into that, a couple housekeeping items. Number one, Terraform 13.3 is out, or I should say 0.13.3. We'll get to version one someday, but 13.3 is out and it has some core fixes that are actually really important for the order in which it creates and destroys things. It was kind of getting a little confused, especially when modules were involved. And so I was experiencing some weird behavior myself when it tried to recreate something. Sometimes it wouldn't destroy in the proper order. Apparently that has been fixed in 13.3. So if that was something that was uh, vexing you, now you don't have to worry about that. The other thing that I want to mention is HashiConf Digital for North America, but I mean, it's really just for the world. That is coming up in a little while, but they announced all the sessions. So now would be a good time to go and register for the conference and find the sessions that are interesting to you and you know add those to your schedule. I'm not presenting for any of it, but I will be participating and watching and enjoying it. So I, I encourage you to do the same. Now, before we talk about Terraform Cloud, let's talk about you. How you doing? Let's check in. What's going on? How's Tuesday treating you? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Monday was one of the longest Mondays I've had. It, it felt like I got to the end of Monday and I was like, it's Friday now, right? Like we made it to Friday? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Still Monday, now it's Tuesday, but Tuesday's better, partly because, you know, we're together and we're talking Terraform, and partly because I'm getting some delicious pizza tonight, which I know is not taco, but maybe if you fold a pizza slice in half, you could call it a taco? Probably not. <laughs> Regardless, let's talk about this Terraform Cloud situation. Okay, so obviously you're going to need an account on Terraform Cloud. I covered that last week, and those accounts are free and you can have up to five users in the organization that you open the account for. So if you want to mess around with this, you don't have to worry about paying anything. Just, you know, create an organization over at, was it app.terraform.io? And, you know, now you'll have a sign in. So let's go over to my screen share. Okay, there we go. I'm in Visual Studio Code. Now we're going to be using Azure as our target for deployment in this. And so we're going to need to generate a service principle. Now, why do we have to do that? Normally we just log in through the Azure CLI and then it uses our stored credentials to provision anything that we want to provision. We don't need no stinking service principles, right? Well, that's where things are a little bit different. The reason that we need to create this service principle here is because Terraform Cloud doesn't have access to those credentials that are stored locally on your desktop. The CLI runs the commands remotely in Terraform Cloud, and that's important to understand, but it doesn't inherit the context of everything else that's going on in your computer. So it doesn't have those credentials bundled in. So you need to provide it with those credentials in some way. The way that I choose to do that is create a service principle using the commands here. So you're basically running AZ login, pick the subscription that you want, store your subscription ID because you're going to need that value, create the service principle, and I give it contributor access to the subscription that I'm logged in as. Obviously customize this for whatever you want, <clears throat> and then retrieve the relevant information about that service principle and store them in environment variables in the workspace that you create in Terraform Cloud. And we'll see that in a moment, we'll, we'll get there. Now, one of the cool things is you used to have to go into a specific file in your user profile and put an application token in there. That was a little cumbersome. You don't have to do that anymore. The way that it works now is all you have to do is run Terraform login 
and it will create the API token to talk to Terraform Cloud on its own. So let's see how that works. Let's go ahead and run Terraform login here. And it's gonna say, do I want to create an API token, which I do. And it's going to store it in this path. So it's gonna store it in credentials.tfrc.json. So if we want to do this, thumbs up, go ahead and type in yes here. And what it's gonna do is force a browser window to open, and I have that open in a separate screen. So let me drag that over. All right, and it's asking me to name this token something. So we'll call this Terraform Login WSL2, and then click on Create API Token. It'll create the token, I'll copy it, click on Done, go back to Visual Studio Code, and it's waiting for that value. I'll paste that value in here, and now I've successfully obtained that token and I can interact with Terraform Cloud for that organization. Now, what's the next thing I want to do? Well, I want to, I want to use the remote workspace that Terraform Cloud hosts to run my CLI commands against. How do I do that? All right, so let's go back to the browser and go to the workspaces that I have available to me. Okay, so we're back in here. Let me go ahead and pick my organization from the dropdown. Okay, we've got that going. And now I already have a number of workspaces created, but let's just say I'm starting from scratch here. We'll create a new workspace and we want to pick a workflow. In this case, we're doing the CLI driven workflow. So I'll go ahead and select CLI driven workflow and we can give this a workspace name. We'll call it Terraform Tuesday CLI and I'll just put two because I already have a one and click on create workspace. So that'll go ahead and create the workspace and then it helpfully provides you this example code here that you can drop in to your Terraform configuration to take advantage of the, this as a remote backend. So there's two things, there's a few things to see here. The, it starts with the Terraform configuration block and then we're establishing a backend and the backend type is remote. So that's Terraform Cloud. And then you have to specify the organization that we're using, mine's Ned in the cloud, and the workspace that you want to utilize for this specific remote backend. We want to do Terraform Tuesday CLI-2. So we would simply copy all of this, go back to Visual Studio Code, and in the configuration information, I actually created a separate file called backend, and it's right here, and you would just paste this right in. Okay, now we're good. Now we're able to use this remote backend, and then it's the standard Terraform operating procedure. Now, I am already, I already configured this one to use the workspace I pre-created, so I'm not going to change that. What I can do now is actually, let's go back to the browser for one second, and we're gonna go into the Terraform Tuesday CLI workspace that I've already created, and take a look at the variables in here. And we can see here are the environment variables that I'm using for that service principle. And I've got the client secret set to sensitive, so you can't see that, but the rest of it's pretty, not really that important. You'll get that information by running this prep script and then echoing out this information. And I put the environment variable here and then the information that you need to paste in as the value right below it. So it should be easy for you to work through. Now we're ready to run Terraform in it. So we'll go ahead and run Terraform in it here. And I've already run this once, so it's already initialized the back end, but it's okay if we run it again. It doesn't really matter. Uh-oh, state Shap snapshot was created by Terraform 13.3, which is older than the version that I have currently running. <gasps> Ooh, that could be tricky. Hmm, it's actually okay since I already initialized this, so I'm not gonna go through the process of downloading Terraform 13.3 because you don't really wanna watch that. I should be able to just directly run Terraform apply. And it's going to go ahead and try to run that remotely in the remote backend. And it's gonna give me this link here that if I click on and open, it's gonna open this in the browser and show me this run that's running remotely and I'll see the console output. I'll also see this output in Visual Studio Code. So the two are kind of mirroring each other, right? If I go back, there we go, I'm basically seeing both things. And because I ran apply instead of plan, it's asking for me to confirm the plan. And I can confirm it either here in the run or 
back in the CLI, I can type in yes. What's the difference between the two? If I confirm it here, it doesn't ask me for a comment. If I confirm it in the workspace, then it does ask me for an option, uh, a comment about the approval process. So yeah, you could kind of see why you would want, maybe want to do one over the other, but once we apply, it'll go through, once we confirm the apply, it'll go through the normal apply process. Now, what happens if you just run plan? If you just run plan, it will output the plan just like it normally does, but you don't have the option to do dash out and save it to a TF plan file because that TF plan file would be local, but the run happened up in the Terraform workspace. So it actually just throws an error if you try to do an output to a TF plan. You just have to rerun apply and probably don't use auto approve and then approve the plan once you've reviewed it up in Terraform cloud or from the CLI. Okay, the apply finished. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, we can see the apply finished here. So that's basically how you get the whole thing going. If you want to tear it down, it's Terraform destroy. It's the same basic process. But if you were to walk through the whole thing, you would start with, I want to set up a workspace. So I have to log in. Once I log in and I have an API token, then I can create my workspace. Once I have my workspace, I have to add my environment variables. Once I have that all configured, I can now run everything from the CLI. I don't have to interact directly with Terraform Cloud again if I don't want to. But the nice thing is the Terraform executable up there is always up to date. It runs up there and not on your local system. So that could be good. And that means you can kind of move things around. If you need to run this from a another location or another desktop, everything's being hosted remotely. So that's kind of convenient as well. If you're all done with it and you want to log out of Terraform or you wanted to log in for a different organization or just revoke this token, if you run Terraform logout, it deletes the API token from Terraform, dot, from Terraform Cloud and it also removes it from the local file. So I just revoked the token that you may have glimpsed before in the clip. So that's now gone, um, but I still need to destroy the infrastructure I created. So that's using the Terraform CLI to interact with Terraform Cloud. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, share with others, You know, spread the word. I'm really trying to get these videos out there and get my view count up a little bit. Much appreciated on my part. Until next time, stay healthy and stay safe, everybody. Bye for now.